Welcome back everybody. My, what is an exciting subject we've got for you today. Okay, now the subject is cobalt. I'm going straight to it because I'm excited to know more about this as well. I'm still Stephanie Hunter from Hamilton. If you've been following our videos, you know who I am by now. And we're still getting all this information from our gorgeous friend. And it is our gorgeous friend now because you've been learning so much and hearing so much from Karen. You feels like you know her for ages as yourselves. Karen Crider from High Hair New Zealand. Karen, how are you today, my friend? I'm wonderful. And this is really quite an interesting subject today. And so we'll dive straight into it, eh, Steph? Go okay. for it. Okay, cobalt, another trace mineral. As if you've seen the others, you'll know that they have huge, huge health benefits. Now, cobalt is not very well known, and there's a very good reason why. And cobalt is a constituent of a much better known um, vitamin, and that's B12. So the body requires a small amount of this mineral in order to conduct its daily growth and maintenance. The amount of cobalt that is in foods is based on the amount of mineral that's in the soil, like we've talked about before. And so cobalt is essential to humans and it's known to be the main constituent of cobalamin. Cobalamin is also known as vitamin B12. And it's basically, B12 is basically cobalt's reservoir as an ultra taste trace element. And, and it's really important that we have enough B12. So you might have heard of many people who have B12 injections. Well, basically cobalt is an important component of that. And so what does cobalt, what is cobalt used for in the, in the body? The, it's basically the same as B12, and we'll do another, another video on B12, but it's really important that you understand that cobalt is the major player in the process called urethropoiesis. Sorry, I probably haven't said that. I'm so glad you are trying to say that, Karen, because it would be tangy, I'll, I'll try my tongue could it from front terribly. <laughs> so it's basically the process where ethereocytes or red blood cells are produced. So that's basically its, its role, is to produce red blood cells. And so it's a really important, because you've probably heard of people with pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia is basically where um, people don't have enough B12. And very often the reason is, is there's not enough cobalt in their diet. So cobalt, again, comes from the soil, goes into fruit and vegetables, nearly all of them contain cobalt, but it depends on the site, on the, on the, on the, um, on the soil where the food is grown. So the association with B12 and cobalt helps the overall function of the body. And so it's, it's one of the B vitamins, of course, B12, and it aids in the performance of the nervous system and also affects the functioning of other body systems as well as the metabolic processes. So very often people who are B12 deficient are very, very tired and lethargic, but also can go down the route of um, metabolic syndrome or even into diabetes. So it's a very, very important one. And also there's a link between cobalt and vitamin C. And, and so they, um, you know, cobalt is needed to process vitamin C. So it's really quite interesting, really, when you, when you look at it. It's also, as you might have guessed, it's very important for iron absorption as well. And so they all work synergistically together. And that's what I think we've been trying to say with all of these videos that are around the minerals, and especially the trace minerals, is they all work in synergy with one another and in synergy with the other vitamins. So the deficiencies are so, so many, but you know, basically it's infertility, um, heart problems, uh, low energy, um, thyroid issues, heart, I said heart, sorry, um, also to do with adrenal fatigue as well. And so, you know, there's so many components that can come into cobalt and as I said leafy green vegetables especially and other fruits and things but the other things that are really really high and rich in cobalt if the food source is good is meat milk and liver clams and oysters as well as zinc in oysters cobalt is very very high 
This is fascinating. So I'm hearing um, with cobalt, and I think I'm wondering also boron, that vegetarians will need to be very careful that they get enough source of those uh, trace minerals uh, because of not eating meats and eggs. So yeah. vegans as well. And also the sources, the source of their food. Mm -hmm. And there's other foods that can interfere with that absorption. And, and one of my pet things is, is actually um, soy. Soy can really affect the absorption of all of these. Some people say that soy is good for many of the minerals. But again, because most of the soy is genetically modified, it's completely different to what it used to be. Great. Okay. Well, not great that it's genetically modified, but it's great to know because... Yeah, I mentioned in our videos, way back when we first started shooting the videos, that a lot of our um, studies on minerals and the contents of our fruit and vegetables, what minerals they carry and what vitamins they carry and so forth, was done back in the 1950s. Absolutely. And as far as I'm aware, they haven't been done recently, more recently. And our farming practices and the quality of our soils and the, the air condition and the pollution and so forth, radically different. Absolutely. So we have to be aware of those changes as well. We, we, I would love to commission scientists somewhere to be able to do a whole new nutritional table because we need to be updated, I think. It would be really interesting. And the thing is, is it has to come from an independent source. It cannot come from a source where any food producers or medications producers, even supplement producers, have anything to do with it because we we don't want the results to be skewed because you're quite right stephanie as i don't know as far as i know they haven't been done for a very very long time and even as you know when i was a child we lived in the countryside and i remember i used to be riding in those days you know um i remember the fields next to us they used to be they used to go allow them to go fallow which means they were never harvest. They didn't grow anything for a, a season for at least every, I think it was two or three years. And I remember being able to ride across all those fields without interfering with crops and the farmers getting mad or anything every two or three years. And so the soil was allowed to recuperate. And so that's the problem now is intense farming methods. Often crops are grown two or three times a year on the same soil. And yes, they might put certain fertilizers back, but they're not balanced a lot of the time. Hmm. So once again, do your due diligence, guys. These, these info videos that Karen and I are shooting for you is to supply you some information and to make some awareness and hopefully to get you curious about what goes into your body and how it benefits you. So once that curiosity has been um, started or awakened, please go and do your own due diligence. Go and dive deeper into whatever subject that we've managed to inspire for you and find out more information for yourselves. Once again, also be wary of where you get your foods from and the quality of your foods. Try and keep it local as much as you possibly can for multiple reasons. Get to know your suppliers. Take some time out to do a bit of study before you start to ingest the foods. And remember the cost effectiveness is balanced on how much quality you get. So it's not quantity, it's quality. Yeah. Yeah, you like that? The other thing is, is fresh is best, but mm. with a proviso, if you buy your food very fresh and then you find ways of preserving those foods, then you know that those foods will still carry most of the nutrition that you had when you got them first. So mm -hmm. whether it's pickling, dehydrating, making sure if you're pickling, by the way, to use the best quality ingredients that you're pickling them in, dehydrating and freezing and everything else most of the time you don't lose most of these elements you might lose some of the vi the, the vitamins that get destroyed by heat but minerals not love it that's a really good piece of advice guys i'd invite you to, to um go back on this recording and listen to that piece of advice again because there's some hidden tips in that that i can't i don't wish to go into because i don't wish to cause uh concern with our supermarkets because it's not intended whatsoever. But if you're going to allow a food or a food source to grow to its full maturity while it's still connected to Mother Earth or to its mother source, it's going to have far more minerals than if you pick it too early to make it look good on the supermarket shelf. Oh, yeah. So look into that a bit deeper for yourselves, okay? Think about that. It's just extremely logic, extremely logical. 
So is your fresh, fresh fruit or vegetable stains in your supermarket the best place to go? Or is it the frozen vegetables that have been snapped frozen when they've been fully matured? Think about that for yourselves, okay? We might All do right. a video on that one. Yeah, I can see that's doing a lot more videos here, Karen. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you, guys, for your attendance. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit the notification bell to make sure you pick up any nuggets that we drop into this YouTube channel for you. And please do, do not hesitate. Do share. Share, share, share it too. If we can spread this, this net to as many people as possible, we are doing this to help you to obtain your health, to learn and educate you, to give you this, and to inspire you to go down these rabbit holes and to decide what goes into your body and your family's body. And maybe even answer some questions as well. You're feeling fatigued, why you're struggling with obesity, why you're struggling with, with concentration levels, why you're struggling with anemia. These videos are here to help you to start your education or continue your education or even support your education. So in the meantime, everybody, be happy, be healthy, and please be kind. And as Karen has said, smile. Always <laughs> smile. Until we meet again, take care. Bye for now.